Welcome to the Living Well series. My name is Sharon Hornash, and I'm a librarian with the Plano Public Library. Before we get started, we're going to wait a few more minutes to allow time for people to join and go over some housekeeping reminders. Note that this program is being recorded and will be made available on the Plano Public Library YouTube page for later viewing. Soliciting business or selling merchandise during library virtual programs is prohibited. Please show respect for our presenter and one another throughout the program. Participants' microphone and video camera options are turned off. If you have any questions or comments, please type them into the chat section, which is located at the bottom of your screen. I will be monitoring the chat to assist with any tech issues and bring questions to the presenter's attention. We will also be sure to leave some time for questions at the end. <clears throat> All right, so keeping your mind and body active and engaged is important. Plano Public Library is pleased to partner with several organizations and with resources to assist you. Along with opportunities to learn something new at the library, these Living Well programs will connect you with information, programs, and services to assist you in getting the most out of life. Today, you will learn how to keep fit with key strength, balance, and mobility exercises to help meet your fitness needs as you age with senior fitness for all levels. Our presenter is Troy Stoggins from Plano Parks and Recs. Thanks for being with us today, Troy. And thank you and good morning. Here we go, we're coming over. And We are up and running. And thank you for inviting me to participate in the Living Well series. Um, I am a personal trainer at Sam Johnson and a, an instructor in various areas. And we'll talk about that a little more as we uh, go through the presentation. The, uh, as you were saying, this is fitness and for the senior community. And specifically, we're going to get into some details pertaining to strength, balance, and mobility. And then we will also address what Sam Johnson Senior Center has to offer for the seniors. I'm a certified master personal trainer and fitness instructor. Uh, I've been doing personal training and group fitness now for 14 years, uh, retirement job. I've been with Sam Johnson at the rec center for three years. I was at Oak Point for four years. Prior to that, I was a strength conditioning coach for uh, and track coach for Canyon Creek Christian Academy and have worked in various and sundry other gyms. And this is all my uh, post corporate America world. So what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna discuss strength, balance and mobility and as key elements of a fit and functional lifestyle for seniors. Each of these elements are important individually. In other words, strength, balance and mobility as individuals, but likewise, they're very integral to a healthy lifestyle integrated together as three parts. Each individual uh, differences or each individual training requirements and needs will be different. Uh, for, for example, Strength by itself is not necessarily an indicator of balance. I've worked with several seniors that are extremely strong, but their balance issues are still there. But likewise, I've worked with seniors who have balance and mobility issues, and part of their issuing issues are just weakness. So as I said, having a program for each individual that addresses the needs on a regular basis is extremely important. I put the word habit down there. Habit is something that as you study, no matter what lifestyle, habit is an extremely important term. And as we age, good habits, healthy habits become more and more important. And it's so much easier when that 
lifestyle is a habit and you in fact eat right, uh, work out correctly, set schedules and so on and so forth. So good habits cannot be uh, overemphasized. Uh, something else, a place to work out, productive environments and so on and so forth. And so that's where we come into Sam Johnson. The mission of Sam Johnson is to enrich the lives of senior adults, that's 50 plus, providing high quality recreation opportunities. So what do we have at Sam Johnson to address strength, balance, and mobility? We provide education, wellness, social, fitness, and volunteer opportunities for adults 50 plus. For strength, we have in resistance training, we have a weight room. Uh, very similar to what you would find at Oak Point or Carpenter or the others, maybe a little smaller in some respects. But we have 11 single stage pre-core machines that are used for strength training. We have a pre-core FTS glide. That's a very versatile piece of equipment that we'll talk about more. Uh, we've got elliptical machines, treadmills, exercise bikes seated elliptical, which is extremely important in the senior world. Many seniors have a real fear of falling. Standing on ellipticals and treadmills exacerbates that feeling. And therefore, by being a seated elliptical or seated uh, rowing machine, it gives them much more confidence and reduces the fear. The SCI shoulder bike is very important for those of us who've had shoulder replacements, shoulder surgeries, or just arthritic surgeries, or arthritic shoulders, excuse me. Uh, dumbbells, we've got uh, one to 50 pounds there, and we'll discuss those availability and building those into your training program a little later. So what else do we have? Group fitness is extremely important when it comes to balance mobility. Yoga, chair yoga. Tai Chi is probably the go-to mode now of meeting balance and mobility. It's very popular. It takes time. It's not something you're just going to pick up instantly, but it's a very good tool and we offer various Tai Chi classes. Balance and mobility, very specific class. I teach a uh, six-session class that goes through entry level to more advanced balance and mobility training. Part of that is fall prevention. Now, I am not the only one that teaches these classes. We'll get a little more into that later. Uh, orientation and introduction to the weight room. This is a class that's taught twice a month there at Sam Johnson. Uh, in fact, I will be doing it by happenstance tomorrow at 10 and 4. And we go through and help individuals identify the areas that they need to work on, the general fitness requirements, and then help set them up with machines. And we will get into that a little more also. Uh, various dance classes, dance, line dancing, ballroom dancing, uh, jazz, jitterbug, so on and so forth, extremely popular and a very effective tool when it comes to balance mobility. We do have three personal trainers, including myself, and we'll give you a little more insight into that as we go along. So what are we gonna be discussing today? Exercise, exercise programs is a very complex subject that you can spend a lot of time in the details or you just learn what you need to know and work from there. Okay, Troy. Oh, yes, ma'am. Do you mind? Um, we just learned that the chat feature may not be um, working correctly. So if anybody has a question for Troy, please um, type it in that Q&A spot um, down at the bottom of your screen there. We'll be able to answer your questions there. Thank you. And thank you. So exercise programs result in fatiguing or damaging your muscles and central nervous systems. So what you're doing in an exercise program is you're actually damaging the muscle fibers. So by damaging them and then letting them heal properly, 
you will or should obtain the benefit from the effort. Now, key to recovery, and I can't emphasize this too much, rest, rest, and more rest. For we seniors that can't sleep well at night, uh, this makes uh, training and working out uh, much more challenging. So I find for seniors, if you're physically fatigued, not just mentally fatigued, that should help your rest. The other part of rest and the integral part of understanding rest is undertraining and overtraining. If you're overtraining, you're going to be fatiguing and not recovering and not ready to go work out the next day. So that's a good indicator that you're not getting enough rest. If you have a good workout and the next day you're dragging and the following day you're really not recovered, means you need to back off or you're not hydrated efficiently and effectively and your nutrition and diet probably needs some improving. Now, as a personal trainer, we do not really get into the nutrition and dietitian aspects of that. We can give general information. Uh, my first recommendation on nutrition and diet is learn to read the dietary panels on most foods. Understand what they're talking about. Bugaboos, look for some bad fats, look for too much sugar and so on and so forth. But it, over time, there's a lot of good diets out there. There's also within the medical world, diets and nutritional advice, but uh, there's a lot of general information that you can pick up also. So to progress in any type of workout, you've got to continue to challenge yourself. The term that's used is progressive overload, and that holds true for strength, balance, and mobility. Now, a good example of progressive overload is walking. I get the question a lot, and what's my opinion of walking as an exercise? And my opinion is it's an excellent exercise, but you can do more with it if you so choose. So how do you do more with it? There's where we get into progressive overload. Two factors. You need to know your distance you're walking and the time you're walking. Now, I also highly recommend recording those and keeping up with that. But as you, for example, if you're walking a mile and you're reaching a plateau of, for example, 20 minutes, the it, that means then it's time to make a change. So you can do a couple of things. You can lengthen your distance and or shorten your distance and increase your speed. And it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Change though is an important factor there. And when we get into balance, we will talk about uh, various aspects of progression within the balance mobility. So strength training for getting. If I was setting up an individual who had not worked out before, I would be looking at, and there again, we have our pre-core machines. I would work with leg press. I would, for your legs, upper body pushing. That would be a pre-core chest press or overhead press. Upper body pulling, a pre-core seated rowing, our pre-core FTS rowing. So what you're doing is you're accomplishing three major areas your legs, you're pushing, you're pulling, and then we'll throw one more in, and that's your pre-core rotation, because ro the rotational movements is extremely integral to balance and mobility. And then we'll also talk more about uh, uh, dumbbell workouts. So on our agenda, next thing we're going to discuss is setting up a program. Now, this is what I did. Each personal trainer would be somewhat different. I set this up, for example, at Oak Point when I was over there, and now I have these sheets available to anyone that one takes my class or two just wants a copy of the worksheets to set up their own program. Oops, we got off here. All right, let's. Uh, let's get into our agenda. 
Let me go here and there's where we were and here's where we are, okay. that uh, dead finger. <laughs> okay, sorry for the dead time there. Uh, just a moment, please. There we go. Okay, here's a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that I have set up. And uh, I've, like I said, I've used this at Oak Point and I use it uh, at Sam Johnson so that you can, we can set you up a program to hit the key elements of what you need to work out on from a strength standpoint and then progress. So if you see at the top, you, first thing you see is warm up. And so what I do is I advocate six to eight minutes on some of the upper body and lower body machines just to get some movement. Uh, just lightweight and, and movement being the key. The one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to go in with cold muscles and do stretching exercises and that sort of thing. We want to be able to get a nice warm up. I have some clients that prefer to come in and do 30 minutes. Now, I really don't recommend that I, because pretty soon you're taking a cardio workout into your weight workout. So I want to keep those separate and we'll discuss that a little more. Now, if you've been to Sam Johnson, you know we have uh, a row of machines and we start at one end with this uh, leg press and seated row and on and on and on. On my spreadsheet on the left, I would set you up and identify the seat position for your leg press. And for example, my seat position is eight. And so uh, based on your height, my height, and so on and so forth, that would give us a point to start. But all the information is on each machine, both with a, a QCR uh, site and pictures that you can follow and gives pretty good examples. Uh, we would then identify on your leg press, for your first set, and as you can see, we have sets one, two, three, and four. In the beginning, we're generally going to set it up for one set, and then we will advance to two. But for example, we would have our weight, say 100 pounds for the leg press, and we would start out with 15 repetitions, and then move from there. And then we have the seated row, the lat pull down, and the chest press. So we've covered really in those machines, the basic areas that I'm trying to cover, and that would be leg strength, a pushing and pulling, and then we get into the rotation. Now we have quite a few other machines that do various and sundry other aspects, but those are in general next level and uh, we would build off of that. Then we get into the FTS glide. Now I do make an exception for STS glide because the uh, seated row, which is the third item on the list, is a little awkward for some people. And I have found a, the FTS Glide row is a very functional machine. Uh, you have similar machines that all your uh, rec centers, it's a matter, it's made up of cables and pulleys. And so you have a little bit more mobility and flexibility with that than you do with your, your single stage uh, pre-core machines. For example, what I mean by that, your chest press when you're pre-core, it's a seated chest press and that's the extent of what it's going to do. Uh, the uh, leg press, same thing. With the FTS glide, I have the row, the curl, the tricep, the press, and then we get into some more advanced movements. But because you're dealing with cables and pulleys, you do have a little more range of motion and things you can do. Oops. There we go. Now, and we need to do the, oh, it worked. So we're over now, the next sheet we're looking at is in fact the uh, dumbbell workout, 
all of our rec centers have dumbbells. Now, in our case at Oak Point, we don't have barbells, and it's it's a liability risk issue that uh, that they want to avoid. But with dumbbells, you can do pretty much all these type movements that you would do with a barbell or a free weight. The dumbbell laterals, dumbbell front raises, rows, bicep curls, on and on and on, would give you a really good upper body. Now, if you're working for, looking for specific areas, you would then pick out those that you want to emphasize. We then get into the bench press flies, bench press, and the uh, bench squat and press. And those are items where you would be working from the bench. Now, dumbbell workouts, standing versus sitting, both have a point. A standing workout is giving you more general body conditioning. A seated workout would be, for example, on your dumbbell laterals, you would be working much more specific shoulders and concentrating on those shoulders as, a, as opposed to the full body. So it, it's depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your program, or you may want to go down one road for a while and then transition to another. Several years ago, a, you know, there's an organization called the National Strength and Conditioning Association. <clears throat> and to be a D1 uh, strength coach, at, in other words, at a major college, you have to have your NSCA credentials. One of their uh, researchers determined that you could do full body, cover all muscles with five exercises. That's do, do those five, and that's really all you need to do. They then came away with the determination that after three months, you would be bored to death. So that's the ideal behind some ch changes and variations. Okay. But it, it's just, I'm, I'm not, I'm just flashing it and it's changing. So we're good though. Okay, so malice mobility. Balance and mobility is a, a very in subject now and, and very popular subject. We, we're doing quite a few different classes. Uh, there's some uh, physical therapy organizations around that's doing balance classes that's covered under some insurance programs. But we have a lot of uh, one hour seminars on fall prevention there at Sam Johnson. So while Safety and fall prevention, though, when we get into balanced mobility, safety and fall prevention is a, ma is a major importance because you're going to be doing more challenging things than what you would be doing, for example, on a single stage weight machine. Now, for my classes, I use the group exercise room there at Sam Johnson, which has the double dance rails in the room. So therefore we can work from those and utilize those rails as much or as little as need be. But fall prevention is a real concern here and it's a real challenge with seniors. And the, as a trainer, you have to be alert all the time, reading body languages on your uh, athletes that are working out. Loss of strength due to injury and aging. It's a fact. We get weaker every year. I'm not going to quote the percentages. I've seen them many times. It varies a little bit. But each year after about 40 years old, you're just going to automatically get somewhat weaker. And so our goal is, is to help minimize that and, uh, and work on working around injuries. For example, my leg strength is still very good, but I have had a, a, a scoped right knee, which then changes what I can do and can't do. Loss of balance and mobility for medical reasons, inner ear. A lot of individuals have had inner ear problems. I've gone through a pretty good bout of allergies uh, the last few weeks turned into a little light case of bronchitis, a little inner ear issue. I can hop up too quick and it will let me know. Slow down. 
So loss of balance mobility due to prescription drugs, i.e. blood pressure medicine. Not many seniors in today's world don't take some form of blood pressure medicine. Blood pressure medicine can, if you get to moving around too much, uh, get you a little lightheaded. So it's one other reason to be very cognizant of the risk when you get into your balance mobility training and just general lifestyle. So what, what do we address when we're talking about balance mobility? If you'll notice, the first thing I have up there is static. People say, that means you're standing still. Well, now what it really means is you're attempting to stand still. Uh, there's a little test we do and the client just stands straight up and down, arms at the side, good posture, and, and just stand. And we want you to stand for 60 seconds and let us observe how much movement is in your quote unquote static stance. And it varies, but there's movement in all of us. You then go from there and go to the little balance pads. These are heavy two inch foam rubber pads, probably 24 by 12 inches. And you would work then standing on those still in a static position, but in an unstable ground position. And so you would challenge yourself there. Dynamic. Dynamic just means you're moving. That means you're walking. That means you're striding. That means you're doing your daily activities. That means you get your ankles crossed up or you step on your toe and you stumble. What we try to do is ingrain some muscle memory of stumbling in a controlled environment and in a dynamic environment and help you to learn the best methods of catching yourself. It's not easy. And it's something though that through muscle memory, if you learn when you stumble, instead of taking a little short falling step forward, aggressively go into not a deep lunge, but a lunge, which then puts you in a more dynamic, stable position. Front to back movements, uh, walking, backing up, turning, stepping, so on and so forth. Uh, we get into that all the time over uh, just in daily activities. Lateral movements, more challenge. We don't think about it and don't generally practice our lateral movements, but our stability moving laterally is much less than it would be moving front to back. Uh, we do something called a curtsy squat, which would be, for example, if your left foot's forward, you're going to step behind with your right foot and do a little curtsy movement. And then we would move back to the other side. You will find that's a position that people stumble in regularly. So what we're trying to do is get you into a as much of a comfort zone as possible under those considerations. Uh, rotational movements, there again, we mentioned rotational movements as a machine, but if you're picking something up on one surface and rotating to the, another direction to set it down, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. So you need to understand how to control rotational movements and how to maintain your balance. And probably the worst bugaboo, and I actually set up some scenarios in my class where we're dealing with uneven surfaces. Now, obviously we can't do that much uh, as if we were outside, but between using uh, little hurdles, using uh, mats, using the foam blocks we were talking about, uh, we will do some movement on uneven surfaces. Now there again, we're gonna do that at a point in time that we're utilizing the rails there in the, the dance rails there in the group fitness room. But my instructions will be, we'll always go through safely once and have you hang on for dear life and get comfortable. You can do it again if you like under those circumstances. But then I'm gonna recommend you minimize the amount of 
uh, grip that you're using on the rails and try to do it as best you can, but keeping close. I'm gonna be spotting you and you're going to be working there close to the rails. So, balance issues come about from pretty much from, no, let me back up a little bit. Known physical balance and mobility issues come from known areas that we're going to discuss. Now, obviously, when we get into medicine, inner ear, that sort of thing, it's different. But the first thing we'll talk about here is the importance of posture. I know the head weighs somewhere between 10, 13 pounds, depending on size, age, gender, and so on and so forth. If you have a perfectly lined skull to feet and really good posture, you're way ahead of the game. Unfortunately, the majority of we seniors, our posture is starting to lag. We have a tendency to carry too much stress up in the muscle areas around the neck called the traps, which I have to remind people regularly, lower your shoulders, lower your shoulders, lower your shoulders. You want to activate the muscles in what's called the rhomboid area or your shoulder blade area. So therefore, your good posture, you've got your upper shoulders, trap area relaxed, and your rhomboid or shoulder blade area activated, therefore maintaining good posture, good head alignment. Uh, as that 13 pound head gets further, further out in front of you, this significantly increases the risk of falling. Ankles and feet, big issue. Uh, I think we're all very familiar in today's world on, with the feet issues, uh, ankle issues, stiff, we have something that I refer to uh, as the senior shuffle. And we've all seen it. And it's when the uh, senior individual is not picking up their feet, their ankle mobility is not there, and potentially they're losing feeling in their feet through neuropathy. So those are all key issues having to do with the ankles and feet. The other thing is knees. Do you still walk upstairs? Do you still out on hiking or walking, walk up hills, hills, excuse me. And therefore that knee mobility along with that ankle and feet mobility becomes more and more important. Stiff hips. Well, let's back up one more. Getting up and down out of the chair, daily movements of hinging, setting back down. Try to use less knee and more hip. Now, flexibility plays a role in all that uh, because as we talked about the flexibility in the ankles and feet, flexibility in knees and the flexibility in the hips, they all play a major role in the term gait. Now, all gait means, and there's all sorts of scientific research on that subject, but really all it means is, for me, it's broken down to stride length. Do you take a comfortable stride length or do you shorten your stride length? Are you stable side to side as you step out? Only certain things can be done to help that. But one of the things we like to do was, with, is overstriding through short lunges uh, and lengthening just let me try that again, striding out and lengthening your lunge in a safe and controlled environment by using the dance rails there in the room. So it's very important. Observe your friends, observe your family members and their stride length. Pick out if you see them shuffling and not lifting their ankles and feet and so on and so forth. Now, in some of our classes, we get down and do mat work. In some of the classes, we don't. It really depends on the audience. But the key thing on getting down is don't ever get down without a plan on how to get up. I'm very serious about that. Pay attention to your environment. Okay, no, we're good. 
So in conclusion, let's talk about the takeaway from this. The senior population, and here I use 50 plus because that's what we recognize at Sam Johnson. Most of our statistical data is based on 55, but that's really of no major consequences. But it's the largest group, that's the 50 plus, 55 plus of individuals in the United States from a population standpoint. Now, it's a very diverse group. And at your, I'll skip down to the bottom. And as a trainer and fitness instructor, it is extremely important to understand the needs and requirements of senior adults. Uh, editorializing a little bit, commercial gyms don't always recognize needs of seniors versus quote unquote general, general population, even though we are now have become the largest portion of that. There's elite senior athletes. I participated at a high level for nearly 10 years. I was uh, a top 10 senior game uh, master class sprinter in the short sprints, uh, all American standards. There's a lot of research being done by various organizations like Functional Aging Institute that's trying to understand why elite seniors are elite. Uh, and, and some of them are known. I happened to have the opportunity years ago when he lived in Plano to train with a gentleman named James Lofton. He's in the NFL Hall of Fame. He was an All-American track athlete at Stanford University. And he was NC2A long jump champion and ran on the NC2A four by 400 meters. Well, guess what? He's still an elite athlete today because his lifestyle has uh, afforded him or he has chosen a healthy lifestyle that has afforded him good health and a lot of fun times. Now, Injuries plays a major part of that. And so the reason I don't compete anymore is in fact, uh, injuries that just kept bringing me back down. But I also have some uh, balance issues, uh, muscular balance issues that come into play. Now, we also have full, fully fit seniors. Those are people who are potentially on the same level as a senior athlete, but, uh, they choose not to compete, but they enjoy their, their workouts and they have developed good lifestyle habits. The semi-fit, higher independent, lower independent, pre-frail and frail. So as you can see, we are not a single focus group. We have lots of issues. One of the things I started when I first started into the senior world of training, uh, I had the opportunity to work with a little franchise that does uh, provides trainers for, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Evergreen and Churchill uh, living centers. Lots of fun and lot, met a lot of good people and really advanced my knowledge. But this came into play because we would have, I would generally have 15, 18, 20 people. Well, I would have two or three people that could just flat what well, they were capable of teaching the class. But the, the majority of others were in a learning position. So as a trainer, it's challenging for me and any other trainer to, in fact, develop a program where you can satisfy the needs of the overall population. And it's a challenge. It's not easily done. So for seniors who are interested in addressing their strength, balance, and mobility needs, if you're not a member of Sam Johnson, come check us out. If you are, come check us out. Uh, review the catalogs, identify who's those classes that will fit your needs, meet the instructor, visit the class, and just become informed. Now, we have three personal trainers that work at Sam Johnson. Uh, I know Heather Hunt also works at the others. I'm not sure about uh, Ariana Swanson. Ariana is a bright young lady with lots of energy, uh, mid 
20s probably, and uh, she will challenge you. Heather Hunt, I've known Heather for years. Heather will turn 50 this year. And the interesting thing about Heather is that she did not start training until she was 42 years old and now has competed in numerous physique contests and won a lot of awards from it and has really taken her overall fitness to another level. And she brings that sort of training with her. And myself, uh, we've covered my background and so on and so forth. But uh, I can, oh, let me back up a little bit. All of our personal information, contact information, is there at Sam Johnson, just like the calendar, uh, calendars, just like the catalogs are, so that we can, uh, you can obtain the information you need, meet, like I'm repeating myself, but meet with your instructors, meet the trainers, and find out what you want to do. And like there are other things like Tai Chi and dance classes that are a little outside the norm. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, this is the contact information for in general for Sam Johnson, 16th Street. It was renovated a few years ago. Nice, new, very clean and well managed. Questions? Please questions. Yes, feel free to um, type in those questions either in the Q&A box or at the bottom of the screen or the chat feature should be working now. Um, and got a lot of good, useful information from Troy. So now's an opportunity. Right. We'll continue to think. I'm gonna um I'm gonna talk to you while you ponder those questions or get them lined up just a little bit as Troy is right here. While you're thinking of those questions, I'd like to share some other programs that the Plano Public Libraries offer. So um this is one, um, it is called Memory Keepers. Um, and it's for people who are living with early stages of dementia or Alzheimer's and their care partners. Memory Keepers offers, uh, is offered in partnership with the Alzheimer's Association. It's a monthly um, online conversational program for people um, and that are affected and their care partners to explore and conserve, conserve memories together. Um, the aim of this program is to give people living with dementia or Alzheimer's a comfortable space to express their feelings and interact with others and remember the past, express their personality and reduce anxiety and restlessness. So library staff lead participants in these bar guided conversations around common themes like family, friends, pets and childhood. And there's time for participants to share their own experiences. Um, all registrants receive a follow-up email with a link to library resources about dementia and Alzheimer's. Can Sharon, yes. let me add one thing. Uh, Absolutely. I, I did not address this and I generally don't in my presentation because it's such a mixed bag of information on the relationship between exercise and dementia and Alzheimer's. Okay. In general, it, it, there seems to be a, a benefit through cardio. Now, I'm not gonna say there's not a benefit through the weight training side of it also, but the cardio aspect of it gets more blood and oxygen into the brain. And there's, I took a class uh, a, a year or two ago and, and came away with the un, understanding that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. there, there's several, in fact, they listed about a half a dozen researches done on dementia and Alzheimer's in relationship to, to uh, workouts. But in each case, the, the brain had been affected differently somewhat in each of those areas. And so it, it's good theory. Uh, that's why I try to stay away from it in any detail. 
but there is a lot of research ongoing and that there are indications that there are definitely benefits through regular exercise programs. Absolutely. That is our understanding too. That and keeping yourself hydrated. I know that. Oh yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, uh, you know, you know, we all know living here in Texas about what hydration issues are. Hydra lack of hydration is as fatiguing as overwork. And, uh, and so it's a real indicator that maybe it's not your fatigue from overwork. Maybe your fatigue is from lack of hydration. So when it comes to overtraining, undertraining, uh, very key element of that. Very good. So um, also I would like to share with you that, um, oh, this one's just a little bit off, that we also have um, a group called the Connecting Seniors. Um, and that is a group that meets once a month. Uh, we meet online and in person the um, first Thursday of every month. Um, in this um, upcoming session, we have um, happy birthday Plano as our topic of discussion on June 1st. On July 6th, we will have wheel favorites. Um, this is all conversations about cars. Uh, maybe your first car, maybe your 10th car, all cars. Anyway, a really promising discussion there. And on August 3rd, we will be discussing life's journey. So um, Connecting Seniors, again, it, it is a conversational program targeting this age group. Um, and you can come in person at the Haggard Library or join us um, as you are today virtually. We do also at the Plano Public Library have um, various online book clubs. So please um, feel free to check those out um, listed online and in our brochures. Uh, feel free to come in and grab one of those. Um, we do have more programs. It's great to keep your mind your um, and brain engaged. So learn something new. Um, at your Plano Public Library, expand your social circle and engage with others. So you'll see that we have programs and classes on a variety of topics for all ages. And these programs and classes do not require a library card. So you can participate via Zoom, watch them anytime on YouTube, or take an in-person class at your nearest library. So learn about personal finance, starting a small business, pick up skills in Microsoft Word or Excel, or find out how you can check out old fashioned books, audiobooks, magazines, or use the Libby app um, to download some of those eBooks and magazines and e-audiobooks that you might be interested in to your tablet, your phone, or your computer. So we do have um, some, oh, oh, we do have these lovely brand new um, ad older adult bags. So these are especially useful, um, as you can see um, in our slide here, that we have sensory related bags um, to encourage calming anxieties or sound building strength brain gains and motor skills. So they're all, all these materials, as you see in the picture, are enclosed in this see-through bag. Might draw your attention to that little puppy, the dog that you see in the top um, left-hand uh, picture. This little dog is adorable. It weighs, it weighs quite a bit, um, giving that extra sense of being a real animal um, and calming with its calming um, benefits. And um, we do have reminiscent older adult bags, um, some that are particularly on gardening or baseball, road trips, um, traveling by train, and life on the farm. So um, anybody can check these out of the library for three weeks, like our most other materials, um, and do spread the word. These are lovely new materials that are available. Um, so do check out our upcoming uh, programs. And also, if you are interested, there are many ways of um, staying engaged with the city. 
Um, you can sign up to receive SAGE, um, that is pictured on the slide there, which is a monthly e-newsletter aimed at older adults with things cover services and programs provided by the city of Plano, including the library. And you can also sign up for Check It Out, the library's monthly e-newsletter featuring news and updates from the Plano libraries. Um, so there's so many ways to stay, to remain and stay social at the library um, and your city of Plano. So we still have a couple minutes. If anybody has um, a final question or two for Troy, um, we'd be happy to, um, I'm sure he'd be happy to entertain those questions. All right. Um, please do stay connected with us, listen, subscribe to the Plano Library Speaks podcast to find out more about what's going in, on in your library. So if there are no other questions. Sharon, yes. I did want to say one thing. Okay. Um, hi, this is Bethany. Um, I have really enjoyed this presentation. Thank you, Troy. Um, Thank you. I did put a link in the chat. Um, that will send you to a, a survey if you'd like to tell us um, how we could improve other topics that you'd be interested in hearing about. We'd love to hear um, your thoughts. So if you click on that link, that should take you straight to the online survey. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. I appreciate it very much. I enjoyed it. All right. And you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.